Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11 and in the comments to the previous video somebody correctly pointed out that I had unlocked the next tier for the mission control building so I have seven contracts available to me I can get seven contracts and so I can take this science data from space around Kerbin contract uh, position a satellite in a tundra orbit around Eve let's see if there's any catches here uh, antenna well yeah uh, tundra orbit Mystery Goo, Science Junior, I mean, okay, I mean, uh, we all have enough time, it gives us 28 years, so certainly that's gonna have to happen. I don't care about VIPs, tourists annoy me, <laughs> so um, I, think, I think that's about it for now. So let me take a look at where Eve is. We don't have Kerbal Alarm Clock yet, though that might be something I need. Uh, so, we aren't at the Duna window yet. Uh, Eve has to be behind us by 54 degrees, I think it is. So it's going to be a little while before it's the Eve transfer window. So, yeah, we, we're not at any transfer windows for anything right now, as far as I can see. So, that will be coming up, though. For now, we can focus on Minmus and get a whole lot of signs from that though really what we need to do is unlock the r d building so we can do surface samples right we don't have that we need money and we've got the advances for stuff but and the contract fulfillment for a flyby of minmus is not so good but after we do this flyby of minmus we should get the contract to land on minmus and that'll be more lucrative so let's quickly knock out the flyby minmus contract and we have to return to Kerbin after a flyby of Minmus too. So, but it doesn't have to be crude. Yep. So it can just be a probe. So that's what we're going to do. Probe. And this makes it easy because we have to bring it back. We need a parachute. Right? And obviously we need heat shield as well. So minimal situation is something like this we could unlock the small heat shield but probably won't give enough coverage to the probe anyway so okay uh we we want antennae too but i don't know how heat resistant they're gonna be i guess we can i want to package this as tight as possible these don't combine i don't think now let me just unlock these for now uh let's see are you combinable? You are combinable. And these aren't combinable, right? They are they don't say combinable. So we'll have to use these guys. But we won't have the ability to communicate uh at the final bit. After it hits the atmosphere, we're definitely not gonna be able to communicate because these will snap if we don't retract them. And the cores unless we happen to be over uh communication location it's not going to be able to communicate. So, uh, if we're directly over a DSN, then that'll work, but otherwise, no. So, uh, we'll have to keep that in mind. And just in case, the science instruments are really expensive, 900, 880. So if we can get them back, it's good. And that should be balanced. But there's no control, because we still haven't unlocked the tiny RCS thrusters. If we had the tiny RCS thrusters, I could probably put our little RCS tanks on here. And it could do the burn to return home from Minmus all on its own. Uh, only a little bit of RCS would be necessary for this. And heat shield wise, I think we could go with less ablator. Um... I'm gonna say, if I could get... Get it to uh, 0.55 tons is okay. Let's try 120 a blader and see if that's enough, given our experience with the moon, for instance. So otherwise, uh, thanks to the parachute in particular, there's no open nodes at the top here right now. So I think this is a reasonably aerodynamic package. We still don't have fairings. We have a service bay though, but we don't have fairings. We do have a nose cone. Do We do have the radio parachute. So we could put the full nose cone on if we wanted to. Um, that's an option. We've got this nose cone. We could put that on. Obviously, that's more mass, though. Well, it's only 0.03 extra, but we'd have to have two of the radial parachutes to compensate, and that would be more mass. 
Oh, we could uh, have these thrusters. We could go backwards again. Somebody pointed out that I neglected the fact that we could change the directionality of control these days. They can't cross feed through the heat shield, I guess. So, oh just one fuel line, would it make it imbalanced or anything? I don't know. It's 0.05 tons. And apparently, if you attach it to the heat shield, it's okay. <laughs> um, I mean, it shows the delta V there, so... I just want it to look a little bit better. There was a time when you couldn't do this. Herbal has evolved. Okay, so we've got one little thing there. It might be good to have a little bit more fuel than this. What's our thrust to weight ratio? It's only 0.33 though. Okay, there's our little makeshift umbilical. I think overall we have too much delta V. So we could trade some of it off for thrust to weight ratio here. Minmus 1. Let's see. Okay, there's probably a good time to transfer to Minmus. Well, we're equatorial though. Minmus hardly has any sort of inclination. Um, but if we had to, uh, we're not, we're, we're sort of at one end. Uh, see, Minmus, where we are right now, on this side here, you take a look at Minmus' orbit. You can use the moon's orbit as a reference. Because you know the moon's equatorial. We could get them both to be straight lines, basically. See, now they're both straight lines. This end is where Mimis is high. We would like it where it's crossing the equator. So we would like to time warp until we're over here. Like that, we should be able to just go south by about 5 degrees. Oh, I forgot solar panels. Whoops. Recover vessel. Totally packing all that stuff on top there. Forgot my little solar panels. Good thing I time warped. And notice that the power is going. Okay, so we'll have soap panels right on top of the batteries. That makes some sense. Orbit information and launch. We don't need to care about uh, the inclination bit. Or at least checking it out until we're on the terrier stage. Okay, we're in the, through the speed of sound in a transonic region. Gonna thrall down a bit. Okay, staging. Staging. Ah, uh, don't flip, don't flip, don't. oh it flipped. Okay, stop. First of all, how are we doing? Oh, we can't really see. We don't have it as a target. Uh, oh, only 2.1 degrees. Okay. Seem to be on the right track. Actually, the negative target marker right now is probably a good representation of where we need to be. Looks like the timing wasn't perfect. We've got some of the relative inclination, but not all of it. And obviously with the flip and also wiggliness with the terrier stage, I have lost some delta V that I would have liked to have. We'll toss this up so that the ant engines can take care of it, hopefully. Okay, separation. And we want a reverse control now. Um, control point. Forward. Reversed. We want reversed. Okay, so... This way around. Stage. Okay, and throttle up. We could also do an off-plane transfer. Honestly, the, all this inclination adjustment business is not that important for a situation without life support. Because you can get there any time, so an off-plane transfer can do, and that's just burning out of either the ascending or descending node, and you'll hit it eventually. <laughs> okay, uh, we're actually increasing our time to apoapsis, so we don't need to do that. The problem is, that's not very efficient in terms of the time you take to get there. You'll be doing a longer transfer. Now we got that Earth Orbit Science contract.
Uh, we need to extend these antennae. <laughs> oh no, it's too late! Uh-oh. Well, hopefully we're high enough that it's not gonna... ...be a big problem. We should pick up this... ...comsat soon. Maybe. No, maybe not. Oh, uh, I was too late on extending those stupid Commutron 16s. That's why I like the surface attached ones, so I don't have to remember. Depending on when we pick it up, it's not necessarily done for yet. Oh, so by virtue of the fact that we can reach him and miss at any time and we don't have to worry about life support. Oh, so it's actually good that the ant engines do not have a high thrust to weight ratio at this point. That's also a good thing. Okay, we have a connection stop. Okay, let's get the antennae out. Okay, well, probably the best thing to do is, uh, well... How fast could we get to Minmus? Maybe... Let me make a little maneuver here. I guess, I mean, that's doable, <laughs> obviously. Uh, we just need to uh, turn out of this ascending node now, and we can just correct inclination there, it'll make it simpler. As part of our prograde burn, the rest of our prograde burn. And... We'll get there early, which means it'll take a little bit more to get into orbit if we want to get into orbit. I think we'll get into orbit just to simplify return. Well, I mean, there's a free return here. I think I packed too much fuel for a flyby, to be honest. Um, this, I actually packed enough to do an orbit and everything. So, okay. Well, we'll decide whether we want to get into orbit when we get there. Uh, we could have a free return here. It's a little bit crashy right now. We'd have to adjust that periapsis. But, uh, alright, we've got a node. Uh, we better start it now. Uh, it says start burn already. Yep. Only a minor inclination adjustment. Okay, so... Science from Earth orbit. Uh, space around Kerbin, not Earth. Curve in orbit. Um, that should do. We all charged up. That's good enough. Transmit. Yep, and fulfilled that. All right, good times. So yes, this time saved by the low thrust weight ratio of the ant engine. And you know what? I'm gonna save orbiting Minmus for when we actually get paid to do it. Darn it. We'll do the free return flyby thing. And Minmus space. Okay, well, we've got uh, contract parameter complete. And we've also got world's first milestone. First flyby of Minmus. Initiated the first flyby of Minmus. Can clear the rest of it for now. Okay, whoop, no, I want that. So, high over Minmus goo. And we will be bringing that back. High over Minmus thermometer. Well, we got extra for recovery, but not that much. I'll think about that. We transmitted the barometer, so we can do that again. Let's just transmit. The question is, when we get to our periapsis, will we have communication? It's uh, not likely, actually. So what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna get the high over to recover, and if we can overwrite it with the low over, we'll do that. I think it's 25 kilometers or something. Well, there's a chance. Near. Okay, keep. All right, we got that. Let's see if we can overwrite the. Others in time. I don't know if I can find them. Barometer. Okay, keep. And thermometer. Keep. Keep. Okay. Got all the things. Just. Uh, actually, uh, because we're passing low, the bulge of Minmus has not cut our communications yet. Okay, so we are still en route to Apoapsis. You know what, we can retro this and speed our trip home. 
You can see the time to periapsis is going down by doing this. Because we're before apoapsis. If we were after apoapsis, we wouldn't be doing this quite the same way. Um, and I actually want to tilt this way. I think. Yeah, I want to manage that periapsis so it doesn't get too low, but I still want to bring the apoapsis down. Things you do when you have spare fuel. Okay, that's the periapsis I want. We'll leave it there. So, on our way back. Okay, here we go. Now, polar... I don't know what the communication situation is as far as polar. A lot of the comp sites, uh, I guess there's plenty of polar. There's that thing there. Nope, that's actually the KSC. It's fooling me. Uh, there's not a whole lot of high latitude comm stuff going on here. So we should probably plan ahead for that. Let me deploy that shoot. I mean, I'll pre-deploy. Um, we are going to control properly now. Okay. We're going to dump the tank because I think our periapsis is fine. I don't need to adjust it anymore. I'd like to retract the antennae so we get value back for them. But we'll see when we lose. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if I get a chance to do that. We might be coming back close to the equator, actually. Coming around. We're pretty close to the KSC at Periapsis. Not too far away. Maybe the probe core zone comms might be enough. But I absolutely want to make sure that we are oriented retrograde when we hit the atmosphere. So that we start off right. I've retracted one. I think we're bouncing off of that comm set. Okay, I'm taking it off of SAS. Oh, I lost comms already because of plasma. Oh. Uh, well, there goes that antenna. I wanted it off of SAS so that the aero forces would take care of the orientation, but it looks alright right now. About 5 G's at the peak. Okay, not that much a blader lost. Doesn't look like we're regaining comms. We can't communicate to the satellite anymore because we retracted that antenna and the other one broke. And we're out of line of sight of the space center. So, it's all on its own. Okay, and... Splashdown. A little bit rough on the splashdown. Uh oh. Oh no, it's starting to sink. Recover, recover. No, please. Oh, come on. Ah, uh, we'll have to go to the tracking station to recover it. Quickly. Um, wait. Abandon this mission, and it will be lost. What? Oh, shoot. I should have, like, tried to aim for ground. Wait, maybe how far off the surface are we? That's a long time. A little bit less than 20 minutes. <laughs> oh wait, it allowed me to recover vessel just now. While I was in time warp. Maybe. I just click recover vessel. It worked! <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand these things. Okay, uh, 96 science. Did they, have they provided us with floats? I mean, seriously. I mean, if you're gonna have stuff sink, can you just give us floats? I don't know. Maybe there's floats somewhere. 96 science, and uh, we, we actually were pretty close to the KSC, so all right. Okay, well, they want another plan to flag on the moon. Well, I don't mind. Uh, we, we were going to do the moonstone anyway, so all right. And I think we have enough, uh, and we've got the other Explorer Minmus contract. Now, Orbit Minmus and Return to Kerbin from Orbit of Minmus. They don't even want us to land yet. Okay, we'll pick that up, but let's try and knock out the Moonstone one. And this time we'll be able to do surface samples by upgrading the R&D building. 
Okay, we'll use the same rocket we used last time to minimize any sort of complications. And this time it'll be Val. Okay, here we go. To the East Crater. Crawl up, SAS on, and launch. I didn't put any additional experiments on for now. Wanted to keep it simple. Okay, booster set. All nominal there. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be. So I guess since they didn't give us, uh, they gave us the contract before we could do surface samples. Getting a chunk of moonstone does not require unlocking surface samples with the R and D upgrade, huh? That's interesting. Normally they don't give you the contracts unless you can do them, though, you know, there's always the possibility that they might goof up at a point. Okay, Terrier. Terrier. That is a seriously tight plume. A lot of people suggested visual mods. Uh, I don't recall anybody actually suggesting real plumes, but Terrier sure looks like it could do with it. Bloom should be very, very broad at this point. Not, not like that at all. Okay, so 90 by 78 seems fine to me. And actually hitting the moon right there will be good. So let's make a maneuver. I'll just go with the start burn timer. So go. And why is there four meters per second left there? That's suspicious, isn't it? What? So uh, this is why I don't always trust the stock numbers. Anyway, spark. Uh, let me just get an extra save just in case. Spark. All right. And actually, this decoupler should go down here. That's good. Thirty-one kilometers. We're on the nighttime side, so we're not getting electric charge right now. We might need a little bit more inclination. This is the East Crater. That was our first moon mission, so I know we hit the East Crater, and that's that's the one right there. Uh, so we might want to tilt the orbit a bit, actually, after we capture. We should have enough Delta V. Unfortunately, it is in the dark. But the other options, there's Twin Craters and Midlands. And Midlands, it's often hard to figure out whether it's Midlands or Highlands. We could probably figure it out with an EVA. Twin Craters, I don't remember where they are. So that'll get us a bigger slice of East Crater if we do that. We don't need that much. Just a little bit more. And we are recharged. Okay, hopefully that's East Crater. I, I mean, I, I think that was what it was, so... Maybe it, it was East Farside Crater. Well, was that where Jeb landed? We'll, we'll fly over once and double check with an EVA. Let's see now. Is this the right crater? Better have our Moonstone, too. East Crater, it says. Okay. Better manifest that... Moonstone. I wonder where that arch was, too. Okay, descent initialization burn. Ooh, get that SAS on. That's a good enough start. And then once we're actually over the crater, we can do the rest. I think I want to land around here-ish, maybe. I forget if we've unlocked lights. I, I mean, we could wait till daylight. That's not a problem. Okay, being very gradual about this, we've got plenty of Delta V. Instrument flight rules at this point, I think. There's a rock there. You suppose it's like a moonstone right there? 
Okay, we're on the ground. It'd be rather convenient, but I think that's just terrain scatter. I, it doesn't look like a moonstone. I think it's just terrain scatter. We'll have the curve, we'll walk through it and see. If it's uh, moonstone, Val will not be able to walk through it. Now, we haven't done the science here. Let me uh, get the EV report. Uh, yep. Surface sample. We did the little lander science, but not Kerbal science. And crew report. So we got the surface sample, despite not actually having touched the surface. But that's alright. It's more convenient that way. So now... Um, I mean, we need to plant a flag on the moon, we get that contract done. Okay, Val at East Crater. Hmm. Which one is the Moonstone? That's the question of the hour. Okay, so you can walk through that one, right, Val? That's that's not a Moonstone, right? Yep, that is Terrain Scatter. There's a stone over there. I can't see whether it's a moonstone or not. I'm not using the EVA propellant on the off chance that we need to scope the area around at a larger distance to find the moonstone. So I'm saving on that. We could just go back to the pod and get more, but that's a hassle. Uh, I don't know. It's a Kerbal size, though. Maybe it is. That's unusual for terrain scatter. Up, oh, up. Oh. Yep, I can climb on it, so it's a moonstone. Okay, um... How do we do stuff with it? Don't tell me I needed something specific. Pick up moonstone, there we go. Chip, chip, chip. Shouldn't it go into inventory? Okay, keep experiment. Why doesn't it increase our inventory? <laughs> I thought... Now that you're keeping track of inventory and mass, shouldn't you keep track of that for the, s the Moonstone sample? I don't know. Okay, plant flag was done. Okay, we do have to go back to... Oh, we can use the jetpack now. If we've got it, we've got it. Come on. Why is the jetpack not working? Is the Moonstone too heavy or something? We might have a problem then. Um, yeah, our jetpack is not working. Maybe we should have packed two EVA jetpacks. Can you do that? Ditch the parachute, have two EVA jetpacks. Last time when we were on the moon, the EVA jetpack was enough to get us up into the pod, but if it's not going to be able to do it this time, that's going to be sort of a bummer. We're going to need a rescue mission. Why does Val look so much bigger than the pod? I guess it's sloped down? It's like Val has turned into giant Val. Wait, what is going on? Guys, what what has happened? It's like the EVA. What do we have? Like, hold on. No, that grab isn't on. It's like it's like she's floating in midair above the pod. I think maybe I should not have stood on the moonstone when I chipped it. It has apparently fixated Val's position. Well, in that case, if I press down on the EVA pack, yeah, we're going down like this. Apparently, Val's position is no longer affected by gravity after picking up the Moonstone while standing on the Moonstone. This is, I think, important information for Kerbal Kind. We have anti-grav stones. And we're going down. 
Has anybody discovered this phenomenon? This seems important. Surely the people who normally take advantage of glitches will have done something with this, right? Okay, anyway, Moonstone analysis added. Um, it seems prudent to think about whether we've got gravity working on the pod right now. Uh, essay is on, we'll check. And uh, we just need to go up a little bit. Cut, and yeah, we've got gravity working on the pod. No question about that. So as far as we know, uh, as I know, we've got the business taken care of. Very unnerving, the whole floating above ground thing. I like my physics consistent. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not the type that takes advantage of physics. I mean, weird physics, I mean. So, it's just cause for concern to me. A Kraken lurks here kind of thing. Okay, we are in orbit again. Physics appears to be working normally now. And let us return. Okay, going home. Okay, time to dump the service module. And off it goes. So surface, we'll have bow hold retrograde. And we're just over to KSC right now. So maybe we'll end up in the water between the KSC and the Eastern Peninsula. With the little capsules sinking, I'm a little bit worried about other things sinking, but We've had this spacecraft come down before into water and not sink, so... I hope uh, Kerbal hasn't just suddenly decided to start doing that on me. Parachute. And splash down. Okay, recovering bow. 175 science earned. Not too far from the KSC, and Val got to experience. All good, did we get the contract done though? Yes we did, brought a moonstone back to Kerbin. So that's all good, and maybe next time we'll be focusing on... Well, we've got a rescue mission and we never want to give up on those, so let's pick that up. Uh, satellite in equatorial orbit of the moon. Uh, seems like a positive thing to do, it needs a science junior out of all things, but you know, we... I would like to just keep it around the moon as a commsat. I'll take it. Science day from surface of the moon. That, that doesn't have to be a Kerbal, so we could send some goo or something and maybe even bring it back. We haven't done a... well, we've done a sample return now with, uh, with Val, but not an automated one. We've already got another EVE contract, so we might as well toss this one on. They haven't given us any Duna contracts. Guduna is the next transfer window, I think. But maybe we'll end up skipping that one and going to EVE if they only give us contracts for EVE. I'll take this while we can. Doesn't look like it has anything peculiar about it that I need to worry about. Okay. And then it's just tourists and VIPs and testing parts. So I got all the good ones. Anyway. We have some science to spend too, so we'll do that in the next episode though, I'll consider the situation. But for now, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.